On the first day um, for the trip to Kenya, um, I think for all of us, it was definitely something that took us back. And we were fortunate to be able to, you know, go to the local grocery store. We were able to um, supply the Alfred Jerry Street kids with toothpaste, bars of soaps, pads for the women. Um, deodorant, just the main um, kind of fundamental things that you know they could use in their day-to-day -day life while they're in the center. Just like basic necessities for them, so they would be able to you know live every day with you know brushing their teeth and washing themselves. I think all of us buying these supplies and you know getting ready to go meet these kids that. Um, we were so anxious, you know, to meet. I think definitely took us back a little bit and made us realize we were about to do something special this trip. I thought it was beautiful. It's right off of the main street. You go through a gate, it's guarded, and then you kind of walk through a garden almost. Um, so the land is pretty, pretty vast. Um, different buildings within the land, but her spot is in the back. So you have to kind of walk through all the plants and the trees and see all the beautiful, you know, nature and birds and everything and then you get to the back it's a little building you know okay so the art center that we went to alpha jury it um had different little buildings with on the grounds and they had a small little church on site for the kids to pray and attend small church services together And we bring the kids in afterwards to do reflection, mm -hmm. silence, you know, they talk, we do prayers, and it's really nice. It, it's been a real bonus, you know, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. because they come in, no drugs all day, mm -hmm. and then a reflection at the end of the day, it clears their mind, you know. Kids between ages like 6 to 18 get off of drugs and express their self, express their pain, express their hurt, express their thoughts through art. They do everything there. They eat there, they um, draw there, they make different art pieces there, all in the same, uh, that same room. So they took pride in, you know, just having that station for themselves because what Ann told us was that was their relief from their everyday life, their everyday grind, their everyday struggle. What made you start this? I met a street kid and he asked me for help. And I sponsored him, he was 13. He's coming this afternoon, I thought. And then I thought, but if I can help him, what about all the others? So I helped some others. And then it was time to go home, but those others were thrown out of the rehab. So I put them in boarding school. And then I didn't have any money left, so I thought, I'm an artist, I'll start an organisation about art. I think that's definitely amazing and impeccable about what Anne is doing because she doesn't have to do these things, you know? And the fact that she devoted her entire life to help these young men and women out and just truly impact their lives. What she's doing is, is honestly protecting these kids. It's also giving them home and it's also giving them hope. And it's also giving them the availability to trust themselves again because it's just like everything that's going on around Nairobi, the poverty, the brutality that's going on against them. It's just crazy to see that these kids, what these kids go through every single day. If you pick a kid up from here and put it there, you might as well just go and throw money down the drain. It's a waste of time. But if you encourage the kid and the kid starts to feel worthy and like it could do something and make requests and think about its life, you can come behind them. I think that was very inspiring for myself just to um, sit back and watch what she was doing because these kids loved, like, loved their time there. And they were amazing at art. And I know those four or five hours that they're away from their struggles on the street definitely hits home with them and definitely gives them that hope for the next day. It's really crazy to see how these kids interact with each other. They all love one another. Do any of the street kids like help mentor other kids to like come off the streets come here? Yeah. Yes. That's that's our aim. The street kids have so many, you know, they have trauma, addiction, and they sort of, you know, but look at Marlon. Mm -hmm. Malika's 
What I would say about Malik is Malik is very welcoming. I think Malik is the perfect example for young men and women across the world, whatever that they're going through, whatever adversity that they're going through, to continue to strive and reach whatever goals that they want. Because Malik is doing just that. I mean, Malik, he's the best mentor. No one would ever believe he was in the street, but he was, I remember. He was such a sweetheart. Um, he, from, from what people were saying, he'd come a long way. When they, he first started in the program, he was malnourished, uh, didn't eat, was strung out on drugs, um, and he decided that he wanted help. It was cool. Um, meeting him and just seeing, uh, and seeing his smile, seeing his happiness, seeing his intelligence, seeing his, his, his vernacular, the way he spoke, the way he carried himself, I would have never known that he was a kid on the streets of on drugs. It's just really nice to see how he's come so far and how he's willing to help these kids. Oh, give him a little play. Show those guns. Oh! oh. 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 <laughs> it makes you grateful for all the things that you have and also allows you to appreciate all the little things because that's exactly what they were doing.